you will now learn how to create partials. We will be adding created add times that shows when the article or comments were, was created. We will add a super basic security. There will be a few errors. And in the next video, we will do Bootstrap 4 and make this pretty. Let's get started. Okay, let's start by creating partials, which are snippets of HTML Ruby code that is stored in one HTML.erb file and then called upon in another file. All right? So we're going to start by going to the show page, but let's close some of these files. There we go. Now we only have the show uh, file open. And we're basically going to select the form for the comment. Okay, but first, let's go and create a new partial file. So go to the comment folder and we're going to create a partial. And all partials need to start with underscore. So we're going to name it underscore form.html.erb. Go back to your show page. going to select all everything between the h2 tag and it says add comment to the end of the do loop cut it out and then go to the new partial and paste it in okay and on top here i'm going to put in a put in a comment my comment will say form partial for comments and then i close so this is my html comment to remind me what this uh, partial contains. Because you may have more than one form HTML in different folders later on. Okay, and in the show file, open up your Ruby syntax under the HR tag and above the links. You will be typing render space, single quotation, and in here, you're going to type the name of the folder your partial is in. So type comments. And after then, you're going to type the name of the file. Slash form. You don't need the underscore. And we don't need the HTML.erb afterwards. Rails knows where to go. So let's go, um, actually I will put in one little code here, not code, but uh, yeah, uh, HTML syntax to just remind myself where I am. So I would give it an H H3 tag and in here I would type the rendered form and close the H3 tag. Actually I'm going to move this into the portion that we just created, so cut it up and go to the form and then paste it above the h2 tag there we go so if it was rendered the form and also this temporary h3 tag would show okay refresh the page or in the browser alrighty oh okay it disappeared so most likely we just forgot an equal sign maybe when we wanted to render the form so let's go back to our show page first and check uh-huh, and sure enough, there is no equal sign there. So put in the equal sign. Oops, there we go, equal. Now we can output it to the screen. So go back to the browser and refresh. There we go, now we have the comment. And we also have that temporary rendered form header tag right there. All right. So now I'm actually going to delete this temporary text. And let's go back to the browser, refresh. Now it's gone. And let's try to out the form. So let's just put in some text. I put in here a second comment, and then a comment number two. Hit enter, or, yep, okay, all works fine. Right, let's go back and do the same for the output of the comments. 
button. So we will create a partial for the comment output. So then in the comments folder, create a new file. And this time let's name it underscore comment dot html dot erb. Okay, go back to the show page and now carefully cut everything between the under the hr tag, the h2 comments header and down to and go and paste it into the comments partial. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to I'm going to give it a temporary uh, h3 tag and this time I name it comments partial. Right. Okay, and back in the show folder, we have to render it again. So between the two HR tag, let's, let's open up the Ruby syntax and equal sign. Remember, type render, single quotation, comments with two M's, slash comment because that was the name of our partial file and close the Ruby syntax. Go to the browser, refresh. There we go. All right. So that's why I like to put in this little temporary uh, header tag. Some people might think it's excessive, but I think it's good. And we can just go and cut it out right away. Refresh. Okay. All right. So you know now how to create partials, yay! So next up, we will put in um, times for when the comments were created and when the article was created. So I will add actually a new comment here. Time, time. I want to know what time the article was created. Actually, I'm going to not say that. The time, the article, and the comment. If type, type. And then, so were created now, right? Okay, so let's delete this last few tech letters here. All right. So we're going to use the created at times. Okay, good job. Let's move on. There we go. Okay, let's go back to the text editor. And let's close all these files for now. Then go to your DB folder and open up the schema file. We looked at this file in section 2. Here it shows that there are two date time columns in the articles table. It also shows that in the comments table there are two date time columns as well. These were automatically generated when we created the article and comment models. And these are automatically put in a timestamp when an article and comment are created or updated. So go back to the show page. Under the code where the article title is displayed, open up a new paragraph tag and open up the Ruby syntax. And in here, type article dot created at. This calls on the method created at, which is native of B and Ruby and Rails. Okay, let's go back to the browser and refresh. All right, oops, a little error. Uh, probably forgot an at sign, and there we go. They actually says it, ask us, did you mean this? Okay, and we did. So let's put in an at sign right there save and go back to the browser refresh nicely now we have the time displayed this can be e 
add it later to make it nicer but this will do for now okay now let's do the same for the comments and this will be uh, put in in our um, comments partial so let's go to the comments partial and open up the file and let's do the same thing um, between the title for the commenter and the comment body let's put in a new paragraph tag and open up the ruby syntax less than sign percentage shine equal sign and here we're going to type comment dot created underscore at here we do not want the at sign in front because the comment corresponds to the comment within the pipe sign which cycles through all the comments and display them so let's go to the browser refresh great now we have the time for when all the different comments were created and as you notice these times times are all a little different because they were all stored when the comment was created. If you want to publish your blog on the web, you will probably allow visitors to create comments, but you want to block them from all other action, meaning that they definitely should not be able to add, edit, or delete an article, but also not be able to delete a comment. So we can add a super simple HTTP authentication system provided by Rails that will prompt for your username and password. So let's do that now. Uh, let's close these files, comment and show file, and let's go to the controller folder and to your articles controller. Right. And under here, class articles controller, you will type HTTP underscore basic underscore authenticate A U T H E N T I C A T E underscore with space name and this would be your username type colon after the name and then space and within double quotation type your username mine is Barbie comma type password which would be for me a dummy password it's not a real password I use of course colon and within quotation mark I will type Barbie um, no let's do Barbie TF and this is case sensitive by the way so remember that and then comma, type accept, colon, square bracket, colon, index, oopsie, index, comma, space, colon, show. This means that for all pa pages and actions, except for the index and show page you will need to sign in okay so let's go to the browser let's try to delete one of the articles see what happens okay the, it prompts us click OK all right so here we have our authentication required prompt click cancel because pretend you don't have the password and username all right, so now we got to basic access denied page. Okay, let's go back and let's click on a show link. All right, let's try and add a comment. Remember, we have not blocked uh, our ability to add a comment, so she would be able, we should be able to do that. And I will reply to HTTP. Don't do this for live web apps. No, I won't. 
click create comment all right so that worked we can still create a comment but we could not delete it see if we can delete it again no it prompts us one more time so that is blocked let's sign in with our username and type in your password and click login okay so now we are logged in and actually now the comment were deleted now let's try create a new comment since we are logged in we should be able to create a new comment so I type new article and then hello I'm logged in and save article there we go all right so we are logged in okay and we could also delete it now since we logged in all right perfect let's go and commit what we just did so go to your terminal Type git status. Alright, we touched on the controller views and comments. Type git add space dot. Type git commit dash m single quotation and type what you did. So I will type made partials of comment form and output. And then I put in created at to display time created of article and comment. And added HTTP security. And remember this not to use, not to be used in real or on real, on real web apps. It could be, but it, it could just be. By bypassed very easily so don't let's clear the page and uh, let's do git status again all right on branch master nothing to come in all right next time bootstrap four and we're going to make it pretty all right i see you guys then bye bye